Should divorce always be an option in marriage? Hi, I'm Sharon Pope. I am the love and relationship coach for women who are struggling in disconnected marriages and trying to figure out, can they stay or is divorce the only option? If you like what you hear, I hope you'll subscribe to my channel. Should divorce always be an option? That's what we're talking about today. All right. I know it probably sounds like blasphemy. She's a relationship coach and she's suggesting that divorce should always be an option. Yeah, I am. Here's why. I'm going to tell you an example of one of my clients. So she is a full-time nurse. Her husband is an executive. They both work a lot. They work really hard and they have a big family with young children and they're fighting a lot more than they ever did. The struggles inside their marriage are, are real and deep and um, not just one dimensional. So her husband started overworking and over drinking. She suspects that's his way of avoiding the issues that are going on inside the marriage. So he stays at work later and later. He comes home, turns on mindless television, and he's drinking more than he did before and going to bed or falling asleep earlier and earlier. So here's what happens. As he starts under-functioning at home, she starts over-functioning. She picks up the slack, right? So she's also working full-time, but she's making sure that the kids have everything that they need that they're getting their baths, that their homework is done, um, the dinner is on the table, that the dishes are cleaned up. Um, she's making sure that the lawn is mowed now. She's making sure that the plumber is called when the plumber needs to be called. She's doing all the things at home and she's exhausting herself. So when he starts under-functioning, she starts over-functioning. And in the process, She's abandoning herself because her needs, what she needs now, not even on the table for consideration, right? She's just doing everything she can to sort of keep the family going. And she's telling herself she has no other option. But in the meantime, she's gathering some very real resentments. And those resentments just continue to mount and get bigger and bigger and bigger. But she has a story because she has young children that divorce is not an option. It's not a real option for her. And because of that, she suffers. So she might yell and holler and scream and beat her chest a little bit about why she's justified in feeling like she's having to do more and more and her husband is doing less and less. But when divorce is not an option, your boundaries are squishy at best, and your deal breakers are non-existent. So she has no place of position to be able to have a real conversation with her husband about how they're both showing up inside the relationship. And so as long as she carries the story that divorce is not an option for her, then she's got two choices. One, ignore it and put up with it quietly suffer. Or option B, put up with it and argue about it. Rage against it every single day. But both of those options involve her suffering. And that's no way to live. I think from that perspective, when marriage or when divorce is not an option, the marriage is screwed. But when divorce is an option, at least in your mind, that divorce is a very real option for you, well, now you both are going to show up inside the relationship very differently. When things go left of center, you're both, you're both going to be willing to come to the table to address it. And when you argue, as all couples do, you might even come out the other side having a better understanding of one another. You see, we show up very, very differently inside our marriages when divorce is an option. 
and it's known and it's discussed. I once talked to a therapist, this was a long time ago, but I very clearly remember him telling me how he had a client who was a couple that he was um, counseling. And he said on their anniversary every year, they got together and said, are we going to do this for another year? Are we willing to commit to another year? But it was essentially once a year touching base and saying what's working, what's not working, are we going to do this another year or is it time to call it quits? Now that's once a year, but truly, if you both knew that divorce was an option for either of you, would you show up any differently than the way that you're showing up today? Harriet Lerner says, if you cannot live without your marriage, you will not be able to function inside your marriage. I think there's a lot of truth to that. If I cannot live without my marriage, that means I cannot set healthy, loving boundaries for myself inside that marriage, which means I have to overlook, allow, and accommodate bad behavior from my partner. And it means I have to suffer. If that spoke to you, if you feel like you're suffering, if you feel like you're over-functioning, if you just feel like you're struggling in your marriage and you don't know if it can be fixed or not, then I think we should talk and see if there's a fit for us to work together. In the notes below this video, you can find a link where you can complete an application and see if there is a fit for us to work together in a coaching capacity. But if you like what I'm sharing with you, I hope you'll at least subscribe to the channel. And if you want to be notified every time there's a new video that posts, just click the red button in the upper right corner. Take good care.